Welcome to the Low Carb MD Podcast. No one is beyond help. No one is beyond hope. As we have always said, we are bringing you medical information and cutting edge science, but none of this is medical advice. Please seek out input from your own doctor. Hello and welcome back to the Low Carb MD podcast and Life's Best Medicine podcast. Unfortunately, Tro was tied up doing crazy work, you know, saving the world and all that kind of stuff. So you're stuck with just me, but my guest is going to make it well worth your time. Doug Reynolds, welcome, man. Good to see you again. Hey, Brian. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. I dragged you on because I want to hear about, first of all, what tell people who don't know what the SMHP is. So... Uh, the SMHP is a is a nonprofit organization that kind of was a spinoff from from Low Carb USA. Really, only because I'm the one that did it, but um, it, it was really Tro's uh, brainchild. Um, he started talking about it in Boca in 2020 in January, and he spoke to Pam about it apparently, but I wasn't aware of that conversation. But I saw him talking about it on on Twitter, like in February-ish, and I wrote to him and I said, Tro, like, I'm already trying to do something like that with a professional um, membership or, you know, um, thing within in Low Carb USA, and that hasn't really been taken off. Uh, maybe we can just talk about why we think that is and um, and fix it. And so we went backwards and forwards and, and eventually kind of came to the agreement that we needed to have a proper nonprofit organization that represents the practitioners in this space that want to do that. You know, we have these crappy organizations like the ADA and the AMA and all these other things. Um, but there isn't really an, or there wasn't an organization for all our metabolic health practitioners to, um, to belong to. And so we decided to do it. And I, I started, uh, I started, looking into it and then COVID hit and um, Pam calls it my COVID baby, but it was like right through until December of 2022, 2020, sorry, um, that we built this thing. And then you know, we had to deal with uh, the governmental organizations. You're trying to establish a uh, 501c3 and you're trying to get um, tax IDs and all of this kind of stuff. And these, it was COVID and, these people that they were still functioning, but they were all like everybody else that was working from home. And so um, it was even slower than working with the government normally was. Um, but if that, but, if it, you can but it did that. happen. Um, I was surprised. I thought it was just nothing was going to happen until COVID was over, you know, whenever that was going to be. Um, but it did happen. And so we finally launched it on the in December of, of 2020. And um, one of the, I think the, the best things that, that we've done, um, that we established already from the beginning was this concept of, of accreditation. So we created or defined these different pathways that people could, could become accredited, use metabolic health practitioner or MHP behind their names and actually um, practice as, as you know, metabolic medicine. That was like our, our vision. And um, there's a there's a training pathway where they can just do a bunch of different modules that we actually utilize the modules that the Nutrition Network um, produce. We use a, a subset of those. Um, but there, there's other other ways if you if you are um, if you do this in your practice and you've been doing it for a long time. You know, we, we kind of joke about it and say, well, if Steve Finney said he wanted to become an MHP, we couldn't tell him, okay, well, you have to do all of these courses now to uh, in order to do that. Um, so in his case, you would be able to write an essay explaining what he does in his practice and um, some cases that he's had that have been successful and some that he's maybe struggled with. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then that's a way that he could, could, could get accredited but most of the people up till now have done it through the uh the education pathway um 
Yeah, I just got when certified you... not too long ago. So for people who yeah. are like wondering what we're talking about, it's it's the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. So we we figured we needed a, a baseline of education of of knowing like if I'm going to send someone to a trainer or a nutritionist, I want to make sure they know what they're talking about. Because the most frustrating thing for people listening is is when you get three different opinions and three different you know pathways to get healthier. So to have people who are on the same page and you have to have a standard where you say, okay, this is the the proper way to do it. Because if you look at social media, you see all these crazy ideas that people have that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. So it does all come back to this metabolic health. And now it's kind of branched out more into mental health for, you know, disease uh, prevention for, you know, infectious disease prevention or survival, you know, all th these other areas where we have experts from all over and all different disciplines coming together and saying, hey, we can all work together as a team to really help that patient. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we launched, we already had that in place. And, and it was one of those things like where you and I've done so many businesses and stuff through my years that, that have just been total disaster. You know, I put so much work into building it, um, probably too much before really finding out what people actually wanted. And turns out what I thought was a brilliant idea, many other people didn't. And so it didn't it didn't come off. So with this, it was the same thing. Like we built this, but we still didn't know how it was going to be received. But once we put it out there, it was like, it was just this amazing response. You know, um, we're getting very close now to actually um, accrediting our, our hundredth person um, since we started a couple of years ago. Which And then there's a whole ton of people in the pipeline somewhere, um, either writing their essays or um you know doing the different courses that they're required to do to get there um so that's been hugely successful i think um and then you know things have have um been added since then one of the biggest things is very recently we um we launched a, a journal a, um journal for metabolic health and the idea with that is that there's now it's it's free for members of the SMHP to actually publish in that in that journal. Um, there's a, a fee to to outside people if they want to uh, publish. Um, we've got one of the ladies there that's a professor at a, like three different universities, and she um, one of the things she does there is is run journal clubs for the students, teaching them how to write papers. So now she's busy creating a course like that. Now she's doing, she's got like a plan of 10 different videos, training videos, teaching people how to go from the very beginning where you come up with an idea and how to formulate a concept, you know, that, that, it, that you think can eventually be publishable and then how to collect the data and how to enter it. And I'll come back to that, how to enter it into a database of some kind, how to analyze it. And finally, how to produce a manuscript that you can submit for publication. Because, you, you know, Brian, we've got so many doctors like you out there um, who have all these thousands of cases now. And clinical trials are very, very difficult to, to do properly. Um, even, and, you know, I, I see a lot of the rubbish, junk science that are trying to show that keto, you know, hot carbohydrate reduction is not a thing or doesn't work. But even the ones that are, there's confirmation bias there too. And they can, you know, it, it's, it's really well, we're finding that. We, we and found it takes there's... 20, 30 years for a lot of these things to manifest themselves. So how do you run a clinical trial for 30 years? And a lot of money, unless it's sponsored by pharma, they have tons of money to, to run yeah, studies. But even, the, yeah. even sponsored by pharma, try and, imagine keeping people like on a okay so you're going to say these guys are on the on are on the reduced carbohydrate diet however you want to frame that and these guys are on the placebo or the you know sad standard diet. american diet yeah yeah and um but how do you how do you ensure that those people stuck to that diet for 30 years 
you just you just come yeah it's a lot of work it takes you a lot of time come. and that's a, and like so, people's health they, they don't have time if you're struggling yeah. with type 2 diabetes with complications you don't have time to wait 30 years for a study to come no. out you know that's so, a hard so, part about it so there are things like like look at diabetes uh reversals and stuff i mean you can show very quickly um how people you know respond to that in terms of reversing their diabetes and things not about diabetes manifesting itself in the first place but um but at least in in slowing it down or reversing it which happens so often um, yeah, and that's what's so amazing about the the low carb usa meetings is that you have people from around the world that go, here's my story, and you, here's my pictures, here's my A1C, here are my laboratories, yeah. and you could see how they responded so quickly, you know, and right. they made these changes. And so it's one of those things, do you really need randomized, you know, controlled, you know, blind studies when you have so much clinical right. data? And, so and I think that's, that's what we've... Yeah, sorry, but that, I mean, that's our hope, is that if we can publish enough of this data, then it becomes enough of it of a of a weight to to basically con oblige people to uh to take a look a, a look at it you know what i'm saying so they can look at it honestly and decide okay this is rubbish i'm not going to do it but at least take a look at it and i think the majority of people will see that it's 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 an intervention that that most doctors i believe should be offering to their patients as a, at least as an option you know and describe the pros and cons of both of both or the many options fairly and then let the patient decide at the end of the day it's the patient's choice uh so uh, at least yeah, be given so, the information then you say i don't want to do that i do and, and that's the the tragic part some of the people we've interviewed uh um on the podcast with for instance they have a child struggling with seizure disorder having seizures six times a day 12 times a day and the doctors thought say well we thought ketogenic diet was too restrictive so we didn't offer it it's like well at least let me offer it you know the reynolds family you know coming to mind it's like no one even offered it to them i said this is a possibility it may be tough but you could probably he goes having a kid having seizure 12 times a day and yeah. urinating themselves and going through all this, that's not restrictive. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then they changed the lifestyle for this kid and he's doing fan. He's a, the captain of his soccer team now, football team, if you're, if you're European. Yeah. So it's amazing. And you go, gosh, how, how much do you, um, how, how can people not offer something that, you know, is beneficial? So, so that transitions us over to the, you know, the, the low carb USA meeting that's coming up in San Diego. That's why when, I want to know about it. I want people to know about it. So who's, who's speaking? What, what, what is so great about having these meetings? Well, we've just come back from the UK where we actually represented the SMHP um, at their expo of the, of the public health collaboration, the PHC. Um, they, they had their big meeting there and an, an annual meeting. And um, they had quite a, heavy focus on mental health and what we've done since tro started it uh last year i think in boca where he did he asked if we could do an entire focus day on food addiction so we did that and it actually turned out really well and so we've left that concept in so each meeting we try and focus on like have a day specifically focused on a particular condition um we did cancer in San Diego last year. We did type one diabetes in, in um, Boca this year in January, which was just amazing. And now we have um, the focus this year, in, but in August, a couple of months in on, on mental health as well. So that's our focus day. And so I'm working with Brett Scher, um, he's a cardiologist that you're familiar with. He's also from San Diego originally and, um, He's now the uh, the CEO, I think, um, of uh, the metabolic mind. Metabolic mind, right? The, the, and which is the, the basically funded by the Bazuki Foundation and and their whole focus on trying to um, make people aware of how effective the ketogenic diet can be in the mental health field. And um, 
I mean, for people who don't know, Matt Bazuki was, well, so the Bazookis are very, very wealthy people. And people um, listening, you're going to hear that because we're, we're, I'm interviewing them today, as a matter of fact, and it's going to run on low carb MD and life's best. Right. Music, so, they, so they're very wealthy. And, and uh, their son, while he was at college, started to develop the bipolar condition. And it got really, really bad. And, you know, they had a bunch of money that they could try to utilize to help him. And they couldn't. And at one point, he was living on the streets. And for all, for everything that they could throw at it, they couldn't help him until they met somehow. I don't know the, the backstory for that part of it, but I know that they came into contact with um, Chris Palmer. And he told him about how he felt that, that this could help, this lifestyle change could help. And I don't know the story about how they got him to actually agree to do it, but he did and completely, you know, turned around 180 degrees. Like the condition doesn't exist for him anymore. Um, and he's, he's a brilliant functioning uh, member of society again. And, um, and I think they saw this and thought, okay, now we need to, like I started Dark Rob USA thinking, I found out about this so late in life, how did I not know? The same thing with them. It's like, how is it that people don't know that this is 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 a possible option for, for people that are sick like that? Yeah, and, um, and people don't realize it. You know, as a matter of fact, just, uh, you know, it just as a reminiscing here a little bit when tro and i first started the podcast episode 13 we talked about you know addiction and depression getting better we we're seeing it clinically so i didn't need a randomized controlled trial to tell me what i'm seeing so i was right. seeing my patients say oh, we're treating you for diabetes but all of a sudden their mood gets better just now just today chris palmer posted a, a, a journal article about metformin helping with the manic phase of bipolar disorder you know because if you lower the insulin you lower the inflammation the brain seems to function a lot better you take out the processed food and the sugar yeah. the brain functions better if we're talking about you know alzheimer's disease all these different disease processes for us we're looking at this big picture and for what they're talking about and what you're talking about is that we have a pandemic of mental illness and depression anxiety stress and all these things that that we've never dealt with as a society and we're seeing it on the front lines and to see you working so hard you know, to get the science out there and, and getting people to speak and focus on it. Because if we don't fix the mental health problem, all the rest of the stuff is not going to get better. Yeah. So I've been working with Brett on, you know, w working out what would be the best way to, to make that um, day go in terms of the speakers and stuff that, that, uh, um, that we've got. So there's, there's some, um, some pretty amazing speakers and, and like Laurie Calabresi is, is, has, they've just recently, um, published a paper about, um, about the help with, of this with, um, anxiety and, and depression. And, um, there's, yeah, there's going to be some amazing talks on that first day, but on top of that, we've got now the rest of the three days is like the, you know, the regular meetings that we've had previously but we've got um you know you know rob Sivas and uh gary Tarves is coming back again um paul mason is coming out from australia yeah he's great um, he's, he's an amazing guy yeah so we've got and rob is always matt phillips you jay wartman mike eads uh dimitris sukalas who um he's coming to speak about metabolomics which it's something that I heard about very recently, and a couple of people are talking a lot about it. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. My, for me, the jury's still out about it. But he's one of the leading um, experts on this, so I feel like it's it, it'll be a good thing for people to hear hear about his perspective. And yeah, and Dr. Phillips is doing amazing work with with dementia. Parkinson's, you right. name it, you know, from a, yeah. from a neurologic standpoint, as a neurologist, and he's a very great guy too, and, and, uh, humble and, and a, and a really great scientist. And I'm thinking that the next year's, um, focus day will probably be on neurological conditions. Um, in January in Boca coming up, we've, it's, it's actually going to be women's health. 
which I'm excited about. I think that's going to be pretty brilliant. Um, but we have uh, Rashni Sangani coming out from India. She's just amazing. Um, uh, for those of you who are members of the SMHP, um, we have, you'd be familiar with the fact that once a month, we have these grand rounds talks on a Saturday where um, we invite speakers in to, to talk about something. What's really nice about that is the Q&A afterwards is not like me being the mic Nazi, like I am at our, at our meetings to try and get people through. But here there's time for discussions and long questions and multiple questions. And this you would, uh, would, so some of you would be familiar with, if you're members of the SMHP, is this thing that we have a, a, a grand rounds talk once a month where we bring speakers in to talk about a particular subject. And then we can have an extensive Q&A slash discussion afterwards, you know, unlike with the events where we have to screen people through because there's only 15 minutes for questions and we have to get a bunch of people to, to have their turn. Here it turns into some amazing discussions. I remember with Amy Berger, she did a, a like a 55 minute talk, but our, but our entire session was over three hours. So, you know, we went for over two hours just talking about, about this, this whole subject that, that she had, had was brought there to bring, to talk about. Um, but Rashni basically did, um, did one recently that it was just, uh, just, it made me realize that I'd made a good decision inviting her to come and speak in, in San Diego because just the way that she presents stuff and the the time and effort that she puts into, into her slides to make them meaningful and useful um, is just, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to maybe get her to do a course to teach some other speakers how to, how to really do a good talk because um it was pretty amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. Dom Dacuthino is, is back again. Dave Feltman's back again. Um, so it's we, we got just an amazing lineup uh, this year. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so Dom D'Agostino, you know, he's worked with the Navy SEALs. He's done tons of work on, on ketones, exogenous ketones, the benefits, things like that. Dave Feldman, of course, is leading the way with cholesterol, looking at like what, what are our big risk factors. A lot of us docs worry more about numbers than we do of physiology. And so there's a lot of education that could be done. So he's he's kind of tilting the the world of the you know high cholesterol LDL model and saying, hey, look, let's look at it as an energy model. So all these speakers all have fantastic research they're doing and they're, it's science heavy, but there's a lot of the, the important thing about being there, and I'll say, I just got back from the low carb cruise. Some of the most valuable time was just talking to people and hearing their stories, what they did, what worked for them, and realizing it's not a cult where you, we all have to do the same thing. Some people will be more meat heavy, some people may be more plant heavy, but we all agree on getting rid of processed foods, watching stress, getting your sleep, you know, all these other factors that we don't talk about enough in medicine now you have an eight minute appointment with your doctor and you don't even think about these. They don't even, it's not even a, they don't have time to discuss these things. So that's why having these kind of meetings where you can sit down talk to world experts. So if you have questions about cholesterol, you could ask Dave Feldman or you could ask, you know, Dom D'Agostino about neurologic deficits and, you know, after a stroke, what happens uh, if you, if you take ketones or you cut out the sugar. So it's so amazing just to sit and talk to people. I learn a lot from other speakers, but I learned probably even more from, attendees who've done great things that, that they don't, they're never going to see the stage, but they can really, really impact their communities. Yeah, I was, uh, I think that was the reason that I brought up the, the PhD meeting in the beginning <clears throat> was just the, that we ended up having the same discussions there that we have at our meetings, like talking about like the people that are there, like this is so brilliant to actually be here, but it's, it's really hard to put into words what it is that makes it so special compared to being on the, on the live stream. You know, I mean, yes, live stream is a, is, is a great way to at least get access to, to the talks and stuff. If, if you are unable to make it for whatever reason, but if there's any way that, that you can get there and be there in person, it, it is the, the, the atmosphere and the vibe and sitting. I mean, we spend a lot of time with the chef at the hotel, um, to make sure that we come up with really good um, low-carb dinners. Uh, and so 
you can see the outlier outlier there it's normal like everyone's having heavy cream in their coffee they're not having all the other garbage and all that and so they just know already when you get there are you part of the group here you go like here's the coffee you're gonna want right yeah not exactly yeah even um the coffee bar that they have in the hotel in, in the one in san diego they stock they know they stock up huge quantities of of heavy cream specifically because they know that for four days and they either side as well for people that come in early um almost everybody now because we take up most of the hotel so almost everybody that comes through there is going to be asking for heavy cream so um they make sure that they that they stocked up on it uh uh yeah and, and but I was just going back to the dinners you know the thing is that you can sit out there it's summer in san diego it's just starts to get dark towards the end of the dinner if you you know if you sit around and chat a bit afterwards um and the the conversations that go on around those dining room you know, the, yeah, uh, restaurant tables is just amazing um and that was that's that's what to try to describe to somebody what it is about this that, that makes it so desirable to be there if you can be um it's just hard to put into words i've never really managed to to do a good job of that yeah it's amazing because when you have dom d'agostino you know debating something with with uh, rob sivis you know and, and their perspectives and clinical experience and you have the other thing i love about these the uh these meetings is that we have clinicians who are seeing patients every day and other people who are doing the more theoretical part of it and we can all learn from each other, you know, because yeah. if we don't implement what they're doing, their their research is useless. Like Ben Bickman, you know, as an example, a lot of his stuff we're, we're talking about and using now, he did it from a lab in Utah. Now, you know, there's doctors in the UK using it or in in, in uh, the Philippines or wherever it might be. Mm-hmm. It's pretty amazing when these when when we start learning from each other and seeing what the science shows and applying that to real life. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So uh I don't know if you want to if you want to mention it. I think we've we've set up a um, a special code for you guys. Um, low carb MD, L O W C A R B M D, and uh, that gives people a twenty percent discount off their cart. So um, if they choose to to come and attend the, the low carb dinners, and there's even a at San Diego, which is different to the other places, there's even a carnival option. So there's a regular low carb dinner and a, and a carnival option, which is more expensive, but um, but it's it's you get a massive stake. So that's pretty cool. Um, so if you choose the, the to to attend the dinners, and or you you choose to um, apply for the CME certificate the costs of those get all added together with your ticket price and the 20% comes off the entire amount. Pam keeps getting cross with me because like she says, like it should just be off the ticket price. But if I'm totally honest, it's just easier to implement this way. Um, and so yeah, it's more expensive for you, but it's helpful for people. And then, yeah, and, and, and it, does, it does give, you know, especially the people that want to attend the dinners because uh you know the the hotels used to give us pretty reasonable pricing i felt for um for these dinners back in the day but um coming back from covid they keep claiming that prices have gone up exorbitantly because of covid and everything everybody's just blaming covid for everything um and the pricing is is hectic you know i mean even with the carnivores like we literally can't charge everybody what they charge us because it's it's just outrageous, and so um, we charge a lot of money, but it's know that it's a lot less than we're paying for it. Yeah, plus um, you get group rates on the rooms and all those things that that really helps people out too. So you're not it's not like right. you're going on your and that, own. And that's another thing, you know. We um, I think there's an, like another month or so that the that the the group booking rate is available. I think it's fairly early in in July that uh, that the cutoff is so that uh, after that you pay full price and it's it's basically double. Um, 
you know, you're paying over 400 bucks a night for a, for a hotel. Unless you try and you get it on Expedia or something like that, you might be able to find uh, uh, some kind of bargain rate. But if you want to guarantee it, then, you know, booking in the next month is is kind of important. Yeah, and I would say just plan it and say, okay, I'm doing it, and then pull the trigger early because everything's cheaper if you do it earlier. You know, so the last minute stuff where you pay more, you know, and so um, yeah, and plus the hassles of finding a hotel. I've I've been in that situation before, and you're like, well, how close can I be? But the other thing that's, and I don't know if you're doing it this time, but one of the greatest things is when they do the the low carb wine tasting. You know, between the the meetings after being sitting in meetings all day, and just be able to socialize and talk to people, and they always have. Uh, vendors there you can look for for things that you like and also um, poster presentations where you can talk to experts and you know they present their paper and they're so excited to talk about it their their hard work they put in yeah you mentioned the wine so so dry farm wines is is definitely will be back but we're also having um, a, a group that came to us um, i think they were at the metabolic health summit in january um, but they they're called dapper barons and they actually do low low sugar and um, liqueurs and sugar free cocktails. And the guy explained it to me. He said, "Like there's a there's a um, a law apparently that if you're going to call something a liqueur, it has to have a certain amount of sugar in it. Otherwise, it, you cannot call it a liqueur." But they wanted to call these things liqueur, so they 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 do have like a teaspoonful of of sugar in in, in this liqueur. But he he showed me like a, a seven fifty ml bottle, and he showed me like it was two thirds of the way full of white sugar. And he said, when you get a regular bo uh, bottle of of liqueur, that's how much sugar. Yeah, people don't it's, realize it's that. They're like, oh, they don't realize it. it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mind boggling. But then when you come to the cocktails, the cocktails is a mixture of different liqueurs and stuff. And the cocktail is not a liqueur. And so they can genuinely make those sugar free. So they've got a few different options for, for the ready poor, ready mixed cocktails. And then they have a couple of these lo and low sugar um, liqueurs as well. And so they are going to be there as well. So that'll be a chance for people to try try stuff out you know it's always nice if you if you're not super strict or you're not super sick and alcohol is not something that is a, a problem um then it's a lot of people have actually stopped doing keto because they had to stop drinking their beer or stop drinking their wine yeah i think are. that's a, for a lot of people that's the barrier a lot of people the first time we meet with them they go is alcohol going to be a deal breaker is this going to be a deal breaker yeah. have a piece of bread every once in a while so if we can make it the, the healthiest as possible, I know it's controversial. You know, a lot of people are talking about dirty keto. If you go, well, you know, if everyone's having a birthday party and you can bring like, I'm going to a friend's house tonight or yeah, tonight. And it's my wife's birthday. So we're, they're going to have cakes. So I go, oh, I'll just bring a keto option. So I mix my health code up with something and I can take that and I'll have that. And I don't feel like right. I'm missing out, you know, but I don't do it every day. You know, you kind of figure out what works for you. And, and obviously if you don't drink, we don't condone you start drinking, but for people who say, I enjoy having a glass of wine every once in a while, well, let's make it the healthiest way possible if, you, if that makes your life complete, right? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you and Rob Sivas talks about this as well. Like he talks about um, sugar-free or sweeteners, right? And and if you have to drink a Cog Zero or something with an artificial sweetener in it instead of drinking the real Coke, then... To him, it's just like a no-brainer. There's like it's not even a, it's it's not even a discussion. Of course, you should have the sugar-free one. Can you try and wean yourself off eventually and and not have them at all? Yes, possibly, but it's not. Yeah, but for a lot of people, if, that's if it's going to make make you drop off off the program because you can't do it, then you need to do it. But then. Yeah. And then look at sparkling very... water with lime and all these other things we can do too. Like it's a transition a lot of times. Like you don't just, you know, like just like when people quit heroin, they go to uh, methadone, then they go to the next thing and the next thing until they can finally wean off of everything. Yeah. But he also then starts talking about um, the other keto things like keto breads and, and, and 
like Pam does a, a really nice um, sugar-free uh, uh, cheesecake. And he he actually has got quite vociferous about not doing those things because they, um, and he's got experience with it, with it that I don't have with being really addicted to carbs and sugar. But he's saying that these things are, are will will get you off, off the track. But yeah, I kind lead of you have, back down that road. I yeah, disagree with him there because I, I feel like the same thing with his thing about Coke Zero is like, if you can eat this sugar-free cheesecake that Pam makes with a with a, like an almond crust that has a few carbs in the almond crust, um, if you can have that instead of the full sugar version of it, then then have at it. If you are a really bad addict like like Rob is, and you um and you genuinely can't do that, and you know it about yourself, then for those people. They need to abstain, maybe. Yeah, but, absolutely. I agree 100%. But I think for the most of us... It's individualized, right? Yeah, and like you said, it, like we don't yeah. do it all the time, but but it's nice now and again to be able to, to have something, you know? And we have people around as well. Yeah, I think, and that's where there, there's people who, you know, they have one low-carb treat and they can't stop and they want cookies and donuts all night so yeah yeah when, right. when that's yeah. Your, and we all learn that for ourselves by experience and for us we use the continuous glucose monitor because that tells us like all of a sudden you see like yeah. all these sugars going crazy you go okay we gotta rein this in you're not the person who can and just like anything there's some people who quit alcohol and they have a drink every once in a while and they're fine and someone monitors them but other people have one drink and they end up in the gutter so we have to learn that's individualized and we all learn for ourselves rob happens to be more on the addictive side so for him it leads them down the path. Other people have pizza one night, then they, the next day they're back at the gym and they're eating low carb again. So right. it happens where we we all learn for ourselves what happened, how we're affected and how, how much we can get away with. I have some people that for them, it's zero tolerance. They go, look, I don't, if I don't taste anything sweet. That's why when people go carnivore, a lot of times it's easy because there's nothing sweet on the carnivore diet. So they don't get that trigger of wanting to go back. But other people say, you know, they'll have their low carb desserts. I have one guy who has dessert every night. He just has half a portion and he's maintained his weight and, and insulin sugars and everything are great. He's very active and fit too, but that's something he enjoys in life. So at some point we say, what works for you? What's the best option? Obviously yeah, there's, yeah, there's ideal and then there's real life, right? Totally. And I, I think, you know, it, it took me a few years to, to kind of, acknowledge that it wasn't simple like like i found it to be and just drop everything and, and whatever you know but then when i say like i found it to be i still we still used to make these we used to get sugar-free jello and mix it up with uh with heavy cream or, or half and half and and section it out especially if it was the half and half because there's still some carbs in that and pam and i used to basically like quarter this this little bowl of this mixed up jello and dish out like one quarter each for that dinner and and have the other the other bit the next day um but that ad that was like a sweet treat or something that uh that made the whole transition kind of more fun and everything and who knows yeah, if it we should be torture that's the bottom line it should yeah, be torture if we hadn't miserable done that, you gotta enjoy your life you know maybe we wouldn't have done, have, have stuck to it you know if there hadn't been those little things i it worked for me. Yeah, because some people, it's all or none. Like, if I can't have, like, a piece of low-carb bread sometimes, forget it. I'm not doing it, you know? So, you know, there, there, there's a lot to that. And I think there's a lot of, like, hopefully I'll be talking about these kind of things. Like, how, what are the, the, you know, what are the markers that keep us on a program? How do we stick with that? Because we all know the science is just how do I apply that in my life and, and make it a day in and day out thing, right? Where it's something that's sustainable, not something where you sprint and then you get exhausted and you quit. You work out really hard one time, you pull your muscle, go, okay, I'm not going to work out for six months. You're better off just going slow and working out every day and doing a little something, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. all these things that we're learning. That's why it's so great to go to these conferences and have experts who have tons of clinical experience like Rob Sivis and you know uh, myself and other people out there who say, this is what I see every day. I know what I'm seeing. And so it's great to bring that with the science that's confirming those things that we're seeing, which is nice. Not that we're just, you know, biased in what we're saying, basically. It's like, well, worse than doesn't. Ultimately, we all want to be healthier. It's like, what are the best options to get there? And 
within the low carb community, there's different thoughts on if you need more protein or more fat or more bacon yeah, or less bacon right. or not processed meat. And they go, okay, let, let me weigh the evidence, which is great when you're there. And the other thing is some people get a little confused because they say, wait, this person said eat more protein. This person said, and then we can have a discussion about that, you know, uh, and, and it's, it's a great time and and we can have patients say hey here's what works for me here's what doesn't no matter what the experts are saying so it's such a great mix of people that where you have the scientists there you have the practitioners there and you have the 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 common people who are trying to make their life better you know and some of the best questions come from the audience yeah so what, what what's the discount code for people who want to go and what are the dates so they can block all out? right so uh the the dates is august 15 to 18 it's a thursday to the sunday and uh it so if you go to uh low carb usa dot org dot com and then you go down to the events drop down you'll see the top one there is a symposium for metabolic health san diego 2024. so you go in there you can see all the speakers including brian and then um just above the list of speakers there's a bunch of little buttons there where you can uh, order your your uh, your ticket and book your ticket. You can see, look at the speaker schedule, which I'm still working on. So if you look at it on Monday, it might not be finished, but it's it will be in a day or two. Um, there's stuff about the poster presentations and then where to, how to book your hotel room. So you just go and click on the live stream ticket or the in person ticket and um, follow those instructions. If you're not a member you need to sign up as a free member of low carb USA. And the reason for that is that, that all the people, not only the live stream people, but all the people that attend in person get access to all the videos afterwards. And in order to access those videos, you need to be able to log into your account on low carb USA. So we kind of force people to join first and then book their ticket because we tried it the other way in assigning them a, a, um, a username and, and a password that they could change, but it didn't work because everybody or well, so many people didn't open that email, didn't see it. And then our support like the day before the event got, got completely swamped um, because people didn't know how to get into their account. Yeah, sure. and that's the other, that's the other thing too is that that's so great about it, is that they have the live stream at the same time. So if you want to go sit in the sun and listen to a lecture, you can do that. If you don't want to be in there, and you can go in for sure. the question and if answer. If you're even there, correct? Yeah, you, you can go and log into your account and and log, get the live stream and, and listen. Yeah, there was to one you. where Tro yeah. in Boca, I think Tro got tied up. He he might have had COVID. He couldn't come in, so he was doing a live stream. And I I was in the gym working out while I'm listening to Tro. So I'm like, I'm getting my workout in. I'm listening to Tro. I'm not missing anything. So there's there, there's a lot of options like that that you can do where you're not stuck inside all day if you don't want to be. But, you know, a lot of people choose. I, I choose to be inside all the time because I'm sitting next to Peter Ballerstead and all these great people that I love to, to be around and, you know, Ben Bikikio. Um, So, you know, it's it's just such a great experience. So if you have a chance, I, I would highly recommend it. I, it's they're my favorite times of the year, you know, going to the conferences. We all get recharged. We get to see, you know, meet people and, and see how they're benefiting. So. If you can okay. make it, do it. So yeah, so this just I did mention it a bit earlier, but just to reiterate again, uh, once you once you go to actually purchase your ticket, there's an option there to fill in a a code for discount. Uh, it'll be summer savings or May mayhem or something like that. It, that's kind of running at the moment, but that only gets people fifteen or ten percent. Um, and if they put in low carb MD, so only the people that are listening to this podcast basically will know that. Or if you guys put it out on your newsletters or whatever, that that as well. But exclusively to the people that follow you, um, if they hear of it from you, they can use Low Carb MD and get twenty percent off. Awesome stuff! Awesome stuff. Okay. So Doug, I got to ask you. I got to put you on the spot for a minute. I've no asked problem. you this before, and it's okay if your answer changes. What's life's best medicine for you? What keeps you going? Where where do you get your motivation to put on these conferences? Where do you go when things are hard? All those kind of things. So. Life's best medicine. I mean, I, I think we've we spoke about it so many times with these different people that we were visiting while we were in the UK. It was just hearing stories of from people about how much what we do has changed their lives. 
save their their lives or their son's lives or their partner's lives or um, just how much better their lives are because of it. Um, that keeps me up getting up in the morning. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Just your story, overcoming you know head trauma and then where you're at now and life. Yeah, and, you, you know, know? And, and just the pretty amazing. I, I mean, I still struggle. I'm, I haven't forgotten what I was talking about while I was talking to you here, which is which is cool. But it does happen still. So I'm not, you know, it hasn't fixed me, but it's improved a lot. And I also am not afraid of it anymore. I used to be terrified to speak in, in public and that sort of stuff. I would have refused, basically, because I would be scared of getting stuck and forgetting completely what I was even talking about. Um, but Georgia Ede was the one that actually made me realize that this this helps with anxiety and stuff, for one thing. And um, and I, the, the, this community is so amazing as well. So I'm also not that afraid of getting up on the stage and talking anymore because of that. And I, I just, um, I just, I'm okay with it. And and it's happened now. I've actually literally forgotten what I was saying standing on the stage. The last time was my closing talk in in uh, in Boca. Have you got a couple of minutes? Can I tell the story? Yeah, sure. Because it because. You know, I, and and it goes back. I think so. My whole theme through the through the meeting is is based on this talk by Admiral McRaven about what starts here changes the world. Mm -hmm. and he has all of these different stories. Make that, your bed. That, wake up. Make your bed. Do, right. do these and, things. And do these, these little things. things that make a big difference. Yeah. So so that's the asked what I turn to when um when I'm down when I get knocked down I go and listen to that talk because it um it makes just it, it no matter how many times i've listened to it it gets me back up on my feet again it's the most inspiring thing i've ever ever listened to so i was talking and what so i told a couple of the, of his stories like through my closing talk and the the last thing i do is is run through the the, the 10 lessons and i just run through them and, and finish my talk and that's the only thing that I have on the monitor, the, the confidence monitor that they have down at, at my feet, um, is just to get through those 10 things. The rest of the talk, I know roughly what I want to talk about. If I forget something, it's okay. But I, I, I was standing right on the edge of the stage because a long story, but all our volunteers were sitting in the chairs that were on the stage from the last panel which they weren't supposed to be. And they were sitting right close to the front. So I couldn't get down and stand in front of them at the front of the stage, but standing on the side, I couldn't see the monitor. And I've done that same talk about six times and I've never had to look at the monitor. And this one time I got, and so as you go home, and <laughs> it was just like, I went blank. And I was looking and I couldn't see the damn monitor. And I, um, it was like a, a few, I've listened back to it. It was a few seconds. It was like, it seemed like pause. 20 minutes when you're up there. It felt like 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But then what happened was that the, the, the people like felt sorry for me. So they started clapping and I, I put my hand up and I said, no, wait, <laughs> As I was, I was still, my brain was doing this and I was trying to catch up. And I think what I did was actually step forward a bit and I, and I could see it and, and I got that first. And then I was off and I yeah, was once you got to, the first one on, then I you was able you know to the rest finish of it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. So uh yeah, and even that what I got through the last one and I was literally about to say my last sentence, and I shifted my weight and my foot slipped off the side of the stage and I nearly fell off the stage. So Pam reached out, she was in the chair nearest to me. She reached out to grab me and I thought if I fell at the stage, I would have just like run out and not actually go back. <laughs> Yeah, we all think it about was those such things. Such a disaster. Like, but such I, disasters but you know what? can happen. I laugh you know? about it now. And even afterwards, talking to people the next day and that, I could laugh about it. And in my my old self would never have been able to do that. I would I would have yeah, I would I would be finished. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing that you get your grounding back. So hey, everyone listening, this is this is important stuff. Be part of the community, come out. I mean, it's amazing. Doug puts a, I mean, I would never, ever, ever, and you could quote me on this, do what Doug does. It's so stressful. You got stuff like COVID. You got these books, these rooms booked. You got speakers coming out. You got flights. You got all these crazy things you got to manage. And 
there's a lot of uh, missing variables that you don't know that can go wrong. And so it, it, take, it takes a lot of personal risk doing these things and, you know, bringing in knucklehead speakers like me that may say crazy stuff up there. And, you know, but he does such a great job of vetting people and making sure that they, these talks are, are solid and, and worthwhile for you because that's ultimately what is what we're trying to accomplish. And so, um, you know, be part of the community. It's so great to be around everyone. I'm telling you from personal experience, just seeing that everyone's eating the same way you are. You don't have to explain anything and go, okay, this is why I'm not eating the bread or the French fries or whatever. And, uh, and, and just seeing other people and being inspired by other people's journeys or, or inspiring other people who are like way behind you in the journey. And we, we can't judge and know where people are just by looking at them because some stories like you can't believe what, what, what they've already accomplished and they may still be struggling, but they're way, way ahead of, of where they were. And uh, so I would say, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and, you know, find your community, find things, you know, educate yourself, get out there and uh, make yourself better. And, and I think there's no better way than, than attending a conference like this. So that's why I thought was important. Tro and I thought it was really important to have Doug on to let you know what's happening. And uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to speak and, uh, but thank you for, for your continued support. Thanks for listening. Um, but go to the conference if you can make it. We got the discount code for you. And uh, Doug, any parting words? No. Come if you can. Come in person if you can. Yeah, and if you can't, then do, do the I'm online. sorry that I can't come. I can't find the words to describe sufficiently how how much more amazing it is to be there in person. But I know there's timing, there's finances, there's all sorts of things that that make it impossible for some people to to attend in person and we understand that but if there's any way you can make it work like really it's worth it yeah and i think the other thing too like having the live stream that once you go or if you do it online two months later you can go i want to hear that talk by rob saivas again really double check that i want to look at the numbers and or, or check the references things like that so it's great to have that resource that you can go back in. So you don't have to take notes like while the person's speaking. You can wait and do it afterwards. As a matter of fact, Doug will yell at you if you take pictures during the event because those are all, all the slides and every all the talks, everything is given to you afterwards. So you don't have to stress about it. You could be there and just kind of enjoy the moment and listen and then you know go back and research the stuff or write down stuff later. You know, I find that very valuable. And so, Doug, thanks for joining me, man. Greatly appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Mike.